Hello and welcome to Jolene Knits A Lot. This is my show about knitting and crafting and all the things I get up to. How are you? It is downright cold here. I hope that where you are, uh, you're safe and you're not being snowed in. I know there are some crazy weather things going on in different parts of particularly North America, but it is very cold where we are. In fact, um, all the weather stations say extreme cold warning. And so if you don't know what that means, it means your nose hairs freeze when you go outside to walk your dog. Um, it's cold. However, uh, warmer weather's on its way. Uh, but with the cold, we've had beautiful, sunny, blue sky days. So there's always a, a silver lining, isn't there? Uh, how have you been? What have you been up to? I have been knitting and I finished my wander sweater. I'm going to pop a couple pictures up here uh, just to show you my finished object. And I'm, you know what? I'm really happy with it. I did make a couple of um, changes. I knit the sleeves to be approximately this long on me. Uh, I think they grew a little bit in the um, blocking process, but I'm really actually quite happy with them. I decreased the sleeves a little bit more than the pattern required for this size. Um, partly because it just made sense. It was going to finish off the decreases around here and it was just feeling too big. So I decreased a little bit more uh, to the next size down actually for the sleeves and I, th I think it's great. Um, I knit the body to my preferred length and I'm really actually happy with the fit of it. It's roomy without being like baggy and huge. And I'm really, really happy with the fit of it. So I think what I'm going to do is um, take the measurements of this sweater and write them all down so that I know if I'm looking for a baggy or like sweatshirty kind of sweater, um, that these are the measurements that I like. And I would recommend actually that you do that too. If you have some sweaters that you love, maybe they're ones that you knit, or maybe they're ones that came from the store, um, take the measurements of them if they're if you really like them. And that way, when you're going to knit yourself another comfy, sweatshirty kind of sweater, or maybe um, a more fitted cardigan or whatever, a t-shirt, a tank top, you know the fit that you like, and you can easily replicate that then in your next pattern. Uh, oh, this is the Wander Sweater. It's a tin can knits pattern. Uh, I totally recommend it. There's a lot of cabling, but just down the front and the rest of it is stockinette. The cables sit on a garter stitch background, so you have to remember, do a better job than I did, of purling every second round in the background. Uh, I had one incident where I had to drop a whole bunch of rows and, and re-knit them up, and that was not my finest hour. <laughs> I didn't love it, but I did it. And I don't think that you can tell where that is. So I must have done a decent job of fixing it up. Yeah, this is the water sweater. I used um, Ancient Arts Yarn, which is a dyer out of Calgary. I used their Laxo Fine, which is um, kind of, it is a bit of a rustic wool. I wouldn't say that it's scratchy, but it's not like super soft. Um, but once I blocked it, I feel like it really... It did soften up a bit, but also it's just got a really nice feel to it. <clears throat> um, I used the denim one, I think, colorway. So it's kind of like a dirty denim color. And I'm really happy with it. It's my wonder sweater. I have one other finished object to show you and two to talk about. Let's go with the, let's go with the show and tell first. So I made a pair of um, sport weight DRK everyday socks. I've been really playing with this pattern um, a lot lately because I have a lot of stockinette socks and I'm, I'm liking the heel on this one. So these are just some shorties. I used, bink, I used some um, Knit Spin Farm in their Targi Sport. These socks always look wonky unless they're on somebody's foot or a blocker. I'm going to get a blocker. Okay. I knit these socks uh, in the midst of a volleyball tournament. So there was some stress knitting, I'm not gonna lie. And I was using some leftovers of a ball of Knit Spin Farm, Targi Sport, um, which is a lovely, lovely yarn. And uh, I sort of didn't take into account that ribbing uses up more yarn than stockinette socks. So these are just some very little shorties, some ankle socks. Um, 
Again, I used the Knit Spin Farms. This is the Frost on the Barn colorway, I believe. Yeah, and I used some um, some leftover yarn from a sweater that I knit not too long ago for heels, cups, and toes since I had some lying around. And they're really cute, little shorties. Um, they're for my sister for her birthday, don't tell her. I don't think she watches this channel. She's a very um, talented woman, but she's not a knitter. Really, well, she knows how to knit. I don't think she watches this channel. If she does, then surprise Jill, you're getting socks for your birthday. Uh, yeah, and I'm really happy with them. I think that uh, this sport uh, weight sock yarn works just fine for this pattern as long as you're using the right number of stitches for the gauge that you're getting. And then um, you can work the sock to the right length for your foot before starting the increases for the heel. The way that these socks work is you start at the toe and you work a whole bunch of ribbing. And then you can see here, you start the gusset where you do increases to a point, and then you work a flegal heel, which is this really interesting sort of short row heel at the back. And then I had just enough to get a little bit of color work in before some ribbing. So these little shorties are going to my sister for her birthday, but I think I'll be using this pattern again um, for sport weight yarn, but also for self striping, because I think that that's really fun. So that's good. Um, and I have two other projects that aren't here, but I have pictures of them to show you. Um, in the last couple weeks, there was a shout out from a local um, dyer who you may know, Jody from the Grocery Girls, was looking for some sample knitters to work up some projects in her yarn, Frankie Gray, Frankie Gray Fibers. Um, I think just as like booth samples for when she's working or for when she's selling her yarn or just to show off the possibilities of her yarn. And so I, um, raised my hand and said, yes, please. I'm a local knitter. I would love to knit a couple samples for you. And so she sent me a package that included hat um, patterns and uh, two sets of yarn to make two hats. So I made the Langley hat, which is here. It's knit up in some fingering weight held together with mohair. The Langley pattern is a pattern by Jody herself. And uh, this very vibrant red uh, yarn was called Brick. Um, it turned out really fun. I think it would be a very warm um, a warm hat given the, the mohair in it. I'm not a big mohair fan. For me, it's prickly, but I know there are people who love it. I like to substitute Surya Paca Silk because that's softer for me. It's more mm, skin friendly, I guess, for me. Um, but absolutely, it was fun yarn to knit with and it was a fun pattern to knit. I also knit the gingham hat. This is a pattern by Jessie Made Designs. And she has so many amazing patterns. I've knit a couple of her tank tops and her t-shirt. Um, love them for summer. Um, but this hat was super interesting. It's a color work hat and it's made using two different colors of um, Frankie Gray Fibers DK yarn. This is this yarn has um, superwash merino and nylon. So it'd be great for socks as well. And I used, I believe the lipstick color and the lollipop lipstick and lollipop. And it, th this hat, even my daughters were like, that's a cool hat, what are you working on? So I, I do have some of the leftovers. I might be making another hat or a pair of socks, so you'll probably see that yarn again. Um, but it was really fun to do sample knitting. And if you've never done sample knitting, um, it is basically producing a knitted project for someone else. It could be a um, designer, it could be a yarn dyer, um, and the purpose of these samples is to show off either the pattern or the yarn um, for taking pictures for the pattern maybe, or for um, booth samples if she's vending at an affair, affair, vending at a festival. Um, so there's many uses for um, sample knits and um, in this case, I was given the um, pattern that she wanted knit, the yarn, uh, and uh, the size that she wanted knit. So I just went to uh, the instructions that I was given. I knit those two hats up in a weekend and I mailed them back to her. And so that was my experience with test knitting. You might get reimbursed for test knitters. You might not. It depends on who's asking. Um, it uh, depends on your experience. My experience was great. Um, 
I would highly recommend it. And I would highly recommend working with Jody. As you know, she's tons of fun. Um, now test knitting is different than um, sample knitting. So sample knitting, I made a project and I returned it to the person who asked me to knit that project. Test knitting is when you're given uh, a pattern and you're asked to knit that pattern with your own yarn for yourself and uh, report back to the designer any issues or comments that you might have on the design. Test knitting is basically working out the kinks of a pattern before it goes for sale, usually. So um, they're, they're a little bit different. With sample knitting, you're simply knitting something and then giving it back to the person who asked you to knit it. With test knitting, you're basically trialing out the pattern, but you get to keep whatever it was you made using your own yarn. So there might be some test knitting in my future too. It's fun to do, um, if you've got a person who knits a lot and you're not necessarily, um, you don't necessarily need, you're not on a deadline maybe, uh, it's fun to do things like this. And uh, I think it'll be fun running into those patterns or those samples that I knit in the future. So that was my experience in the last couple of weeks, a little bit of sample knitting. Um, I also have started a few different projects. I was going to the movies with a friend and I decided I needed some plain movie knitting. Now, I don't know about you, but um, I've gotten pretty good at knitting stockinette without looking. And so I like to knit socks in the movie theater. If, um, if that's not for you, I totally understand, but I would sort of encourage you to give it a try. <clears throat> you can do it at home. Just uh, take your knitting watch some TV, maybe turn the lights low and, and give it a go and see if you can manage to knit in the dark. Cause it is fun to like have a look at your hands at the end of the movie and see how much you've knit. So I started this sock um, when I was going to see Ant-Man with a friend um, and I finished the, the ribbing because let's be honest, ribbing can be a little tricky to knit in the dark, but for me, stockinette's pretty standard. So I knit about this much this is a 64 stitch sock. Uh, and I did get to a point where I wasn't sure if I had increased or not. So the next time I came around to that needle, I counted and I did have an extra stitch. So then I just stopped knitting for the rest of the movie, which was kind of a downer. But um, then when the lights were up, I could easily fix what I had done. <laughs> so that was okay. And I did get this much knitting done. So really not too bad. Um, this is some sock yarn again by Knitspin Farm. It is the Corydale sock yarn. I'll show you the tag. Um, the thing I really enjoy about Knitspin Farm, Knitspin Farm, is that they offer a lot of different breeds specific sock yarns. Um, and I'm trying to work with different breeds to see how I like them. Now I know I really like Targi. And uh, these socks were knit in a Targi Sport by Knitsman Farm. Um, so now I'm trying out their Corgi sock. Corgi. Freudian slip. Um, Corridale sock yarn. This is 75% uh, Superwash Corridale, 25% nylon. And in 115 grams or four ounces, you get 434 yards. So it is kind of a, let me show you the cake. It's sort of a um, hefty, sock yarn. It would be a little bit heavier sock yarn, I think. Anyway, I'm using the Mad for Plaid Month sock yarn, uh, which is March. Apparently March is Mad for Plaid Month, which makes me think I should dig out some plaid shirts. I know I have them. Um, stripes of red, taupe, black, and ivory in the pattern of a favorite flannel shirt. Fun. So I got this sock yarn, oh, maybe last year. And uh, I'm really happy to have a pair of plain socks to be working on this month. Um, I always like to have something somewhat plain on the needles just to pick up, particularly for things like movies or volleyball tournaments or soccer games or whatever. It's just nice to have something plain that you don't need to pay too much attention to. Um, I have been sort of trying my best to work through my self-striping sock yarn this year. Uh, not only am I knitting a sock tube a month, uh, which is going along very well. I'm also trying to knit up a pair of socks from Stash every month. Um, and like I said, it's just, it's handy to have on the go. And I'm really feeling like 
I really want to work through my stash. Um, I know I've said this before, but it's just, it, uh, it's an urge and it's not going away. So I just want to roll with it. I want to use up as much yarn as I can. So that's one project I have on the needles. Um, and then I started another project just <laughs> in the last couple of weeks. Um, I found out that someone I know is uh, b battling with breast cancer. She has had surgery and is undergoing some treatment. She herself is a knitter, although she hasn't had a lot of time to knit until recently. And she often comments on the knitted garments that I'm wearing. She'll ask if I made it or she, she always has very, very nice things to say about my knitting. Anyway, um, I wanted to do something for her to, um, I think I, this is maybe sort of a, an instinct of people who craft, um, is that you want to give, I think. Um, and she's going through something really hard. And so I wanted to give her something that would maybe make her feel a little bit of comfort um, and to feel supported and to feel pretty. Um, so I started a scarf and I have, um, I've had a few skeins of this self-striping shawl yarn in my stash. It's from Gage Dye Works. Although this yarn uh, is from when she was called Caterpillar Green. It's the same dyer. She's, she changed her name a number of years ago. And this is a person who dyes yarn in BC. She uh, is very, very popular at the yarn festivals, let me tell you. She dyes not only self-striping sock yarn, which dyes, as you know, um, even stripes of yarn to make self-striping socks. Self-striping shawl yarn allows you to knit a triangular shawl or a crescent shawl with um, stripes that are the same width, which is pretty cool. This is the peacock colorway. And as you can see, those stripes are totally even in spite of the fact that the, um, the rows are getting longer and longer and longer. I am knitting uh, the grain shawl, which is a, a free pattern by Tin Can Knits. Get on the Tin Can Knits bandwagon, people, because they have so many fabulous, fabulous patterns. They have a whole collection of free patterns. They're all named after different types of grain. So there's the flax sweater, which a lot of people know about. There's some rye socks. There's a hat. I can't remember what the hat's called. I'll put it here. Uh, and then this is the grain shawl uh, and it's a simple triangular uh, shawl you start up here with a little tab cast on which is not difficult but if you don't feel confident you can do another kind of cast on um, and then you just knit back and forth back and forth with increases at this center spine and then along each edge and that's it it's a free pattern it's super simple it's very relaxing to knit and I'm hoping to have this done in the next couple of weeks so that I can give it to her soon. So this is the grain shawl. I'm sorry it's kind of bunched up in the peacock colorway by Gage Dye Works, uh, previously known as Caterpillar Green. Now I do have a couple more skeins of self-striping shawl yarn <laughs> um, that I'm thinking that I'd like to work up and I'm not sure I don't know if they'll be gifts or if they will just go in the stat. I don't, I'm not sure, but I'm really enjoying knitting this. The pattern is brilliant. Like it is, it's just very comforting to knit. Easy stockinettes, or, sorry, easy garter stitch. Um, uh, Cause I knew knitting this shawl, I didn't want to have to purl a lot. <laughs> I've done shawls where it's the right side is stockinette stitch and it's, they're great. I love it. But uh, for this, I was just looking for something meditative, um, where I could knit in good wishes um, for the recipient and all just positive, positive thoughts. So that's what I'm doing. Here it is. And um, hopefully I'll have this done in the next little while. I'm sort of challenging myself to knit a certain weight of the yarn um, so that I can get this done uh, quickly. So I'm trying to, to weigh the yarn every day to motiv motivate myself to knit um, through this shawl so that I can give it away very soon. And finally, I have one more cast on. I don't even know if, you, I don't think you've seen this. It's the shift again. Remember when I was, 
remember when I was um, doing little swatches to figure out what color of yarn I wanted to use for uh, my background and my contrast. Anyway, the yarn came, I finished the Wander sweater, and it was time to cast on the shift again. Now let me see how I can show this to you. It is rather bunched up on the, on the needles, but I'll show you what I've got so far. Ta-da! Oh, I'm liking how it looks. This, um, this is the shift again sweater. Um, I'll show you a picture here. It's a pattern by Andrea Mowry using her very popular shift again motif. Now in previous shift patterns, um, like the shift cowl, the shift shawl, night shift shawl, the shifty pullover, I think, they all use mosaic knitting, but the cardigan uh, uses stranded colored spine. I am not scared of sticking anymore. Not since I discovered, not since I discovered the um, online tutorial, it's written by Kate Davies. Kate Davies is a fabulous designer. She's a very, also a very interesting person who's, who has written some fabulous pattern books, but also a very interesting book called Handy Woman about her um, mental health illness, as well as her struggles with uh, having had a stroke at a relatively young age and how that impacted her ability to craft as well, well as the way she saw the world. It's a fabulous book. I would absolutely in encourage you to read it if, if that is something that is interesting to you. Anyway, Kate Davies, fabulous, interesting knitwear designer living in Scotland, very knowledgeable about steaks. So she has some great online tutorials, which I will try and link to in the show notes below about how to steek. And every time I do it, I look it up because it gives me some confidence that I'm doing doing it the right way. Um, and I'm using yarns that are rustic, <clears throat> somewhat, not processed, not super wash, <clears throat> excuse me, so that these yarns will stick to each other as I go through the steeking process. So as you can see, um, the, shift the shift pattern is all these little blips. And each of these blips is, um, a knit row and a purl row. So you are having to do some purling on the right side in color work. Um, it gets easier as you do it because you do it a lot. <laughs> so you do the blip patterns all throughout the sweater. And then here in the center of the sweater are these little dashes. And that's where I'm going to be cutting the steak. So I have made quite a bit of progress. Am I losing stitches? Oh, I am. I even lost a stitch marker. It's okay. I know where it goes. Um, I'm just going to take a moment to speak to you and uh, pick up these stitches. Anyway, what was I saying? No idea. Oh, I know. I'm almost at the point where I am going to be putting the stitches on hold so that I can continue down the body of the sweater. So I'm, I am really looking forward to that because always, that always feels like an accomplishment to me. Like um, in my head, the, I dropped a stitch marker again. In my head, when you're doing um, a top down sweater, the top portion, all of this business right here, in my head is about a quarter, a third of the knitting. This is a large piece of knitting here. And then once you put the sleeves on hold and you're working the body straight down, that's maybe another third of the knitting because this, the body section is longer than this yoke section. And then the sleeves, if you knit both of them, that's another, that's probably less than a third, let's be honest, but I always kind of break it, break it up in my head uh, into those chunks. So once the yoke is done, that's like big check mark. Okay, that's done. And then as I'm knitting the body of the sweater, when I finish the body, then check mark, that's another thing done. Then all I have to do is two sleeves and I'm finished. Um, Andrea Mowry does like to knit her sweaters quite cropped. I will likely knit mine longer because that's my preference. And I have, uh, I have tons of my contrast color. <laughs> I'm gonna have so much of this left over. So that's exciting. This is some hand spun 100% BFL yarn that I picked up at uh, Knit City in Vancouver. It was hand spun by the Fiber Goddess and it's some really, really beautiful yarn, just perfect for this project. And my main color is Nest Sport 
by Magpie Fibers. This is a, I think it might be Cory Dale as well. It is 100% non superwash Cory Dale in a sport weight. And the color weight is called Bougie Beaver. You know, I love the Bougie Beaver. I don't know what it is about it. Partly it's the name, it's fabulous. But also I think this pinky peach makes a really great sort of neutrally pink. Um, and I'm quite liking how this is turning out. I like that it's very different from a lot of the other things that I've knit. I think it'll be a fun color to wear. Uh, yeah, so I'm, pro I'm progressing nicely. I will have to have a look for some buttons for that sweater because it is a cardigan. And that's, I guess that's it. I'm very excited about it. Um, and that's all that I have on my needles today. I'm looking forward to uh, March rolling around so I can start my March sock tubes and the next installment on my favorite blanket pattern. How have you been doing? What have you been up to? I hope that you're finding your crafting a comfort in this time of the year. Um, this cold snap has got me knitting like you wouldn't believe um, because who wants to be outside when your nose hairs are freezing? I hope that you're finding time to do the things that you like to do. I know that I like to knit a lot. I'll see you soon. Bye.